Hi, I'm Kevin. Well, I harvested a lot of green beans from my garden earlier today, and now I'm going to turn those beans into a gratin. And let me show you the beans. Here they are. Now, I measured them, and it's one pound of beans, and I did cut off the tips and the tails, and I cut the long beans into quarters and the short beans into thirds. And now, let me show you what I'm going to do. I want to steam the beans just to make sure they're tender. So I'm adding, oh, a couple of tablespoons of water. And then I'm going to cover this with cling film. And I'll pop this in the microwave for three to five minutes, just until the beans are perfectly tender. And here are the beans. I did let, let them steam for about five minutes. They are tender, and I did drain off the little bit of water. So I'm going to set this aside for a moment, and then we can move on to our sauce mornay. So let me move you over to the stove. All right. Sauce Mornay is simply a cheese sauce. And what you do is add two cups of milk to a saucepan over medium heat. And then, let's see, I'm going to add a whisper of nutmeg. And I have my nutmeg here, and I have this nifty little nutmeg uh, grinder Shredder, what is this thing called? I don't even remember. Anyway, we don't need too much nutmeg. Just enough to give it a, the sauce a little hint of perfume. That'll do it. And you could use powdered nutmeg from the supermarket. You don't have to use fresh. I'm also going to add some garlic powder. going to say that's, oh, a half teaspoon. I'm also going to add some onion powder. Again, about a half teaspoon. I want to make sure this sauce is very flavorful. And for just a touch of heat, I'm going to add some crushed red pepper. Not too much. We don't want smoke coming out of our ears, so just a few shakes. You could use a couple of drops of Tabasco if you'd like. And then I want to add some pepper, maybe three grinds, and some salt. Just a pinch, a generous pinch. How's that for an exact measurement? And then to thicken the sauce, I'm going to use good old cornstarch, a heaping teaspoon. Let's see if I can be on camera for this. Not really. You'll just have to trust me. I'm adding a heaping teaspoon of cornstarch. Here it is. And then I'm going to add just enough water to make a thick paste. Hang on. Whisk. I'm going to whisk this just until it's smooth. And if you don't want to use cornstarch, you could make a proper roux, which is very French. And a roux is simply flour and butter that gets cooked together. Okay, this is set. Then, where's my spatula? We're going to bring this milk mixture just to a bubble. In other words, a bare simmer. So I'll come back when we have reached that point. Well, while we're waiting for this milk to come to the bare simmer, I should mention that I'm going to 
show you at the end of this video the pole beans that are growing in my garden. And these are pole beans. I selected the skinniest ones. And believe me, I have a lot of beans up there. They're growing on this massive cattle panel. Well, end of video, I'll show that. I'm also going to show my pets' dishes over here. Okay. Well, come on, come to the bear simmer. Okay, are we getting there? We're almost there. So let me tell you a little bit more about the pole beans. I planted a variety called emerite. That's E-M-I-R-I-T-E. And they're very good beans. And unlike bush beans, which tend to get woody uh, as they mature, these beans stay fairly tender. They stay juicy and tender even when they're long and kind of long in the tooth. So if you're thinking of planting pole beans, look for the emery variety. Okay, we are here. So now I'm going to add the cornstarch solution and just stir this slowly and continuously until the sauce thickens, which it will do in about 30 seconds. One of the reasons that I like using cornstarch is that it's just so much easier to do than the flour and butter roux. Also, it happens to be gluten-free if that is important to you. Yeah, you can see we're already getting thick here. This will take just another moment. Oh, it smells very good. The uh, garlic and onion and red pepper. Okay, we are good. So now, I'm turning off the heat. And then I'm going to add the cheese. And for this, I'm using just some inexpensive shredded Swiss cheese. Six ounces of it. You could use Gruyere if you are flush with cash. Pour that in. Spatula. And the cheese will melt right away because, of course, the milk solution is very hot. And we are good to go. Now hang on. I'm going to move you over to the workstation. Alright, so I have a two-quart baking dish that I've placed on a baking sheet and I lined the baking sheet with parchment paper simply because I don't want you to see how horribly stained the baking sheet is. And then in goes the beans and I think oops, I didn't mean for that to happen. This next ingredient is entirely up to you. If you want to serve this gratin as a side dish, just use the beans and the sauce and a breadcrumb finish. But if you want to turn it into a main course, you could add some cubed ham, as I am doing. This looks very colorful green beans and the pink ham. And this is cubed ham that I purchased at the supermarket. And how many ounces is this? Um, it's 12 ounces. And I'm not going to use all 12 ounces. I'll probably use about 6 ounces of the ham. Yeah, any smoked uh, ham would be very good in this uh, gratin. Okay, maybe just a few more pieces. We 
make it a very hammy green bean gratin. Okay, that's enough. And then give this a quick stir. Just mix everything. And then on goes the sauce mornay. Isn't this beautiful? It's very velvety and luxurious. And as you just saw, it's very easy to make. You could use this sauce for a very sexy macaroni and cheese. Okay, I think we've got all of that. And then stir it in so that everything is coated. Yeah, this is going to make a very nice dinner, I think. And then, for the gratin, breadcrumbs. And what I did was take three slices of fresh white bread. If you have homemade bread, that would be best. And uh, I ground it up in the food processor. So that took all of 15 seconds. And then on goes the breadcrumbs. The breadcrumbs are going to give this gratin a very uh, nice crisp lid. I may not even use all of these breadcrumbs. And that's okay. Anything that's left over can be frozen. Out. Maybe I will use all of them. Almost all of them. Okay. I think I'll leave some of the beans and ham exposed over on this side. Then I want to dot the top with butter and my butter is in the refrigerator. I forgot to bring it out, so hold on. Okay, and then on goes the butter. I just cut it into very thin pieces. This is about three tablespoons of butter. What the butter will do is help the breadcrumbs to brown. Enough there. Oh, maybe one more little piece. Here. Okay, now I've preheated my oven to 325 degrees Fahrenheit, and then I'm going to bake this just until the sauce mornay bubbles and the top browns attractively. However, you could make it, you could make this gratin up to this point, let it cool to room temperature, cover it, and then pop it in the refrigerator and bake it whenever you're ready. So this is going to go into the oven again for, let me fix you here, They're all lopsided. This is going to go into the oven again for 25 to 30 minutes um, and then we'll be back. Now I'm supposed to remind people to subscribe to this YouTube channel. And very often I forget because I'm very modest. Uh, but if you like simple country type recipes, then I hope you will consider subscribing. Also, very important, please tap the little bell icon to receive notifications and post a comment below because I do love hearing from you and I do read all of my comments, even those I don't respond to. Okay, I'll see you when the gratin is ready. And here's the finished gratin. 
the breadcrumbs were not quite as brown as I wanted them to be after 30 minutes in the oven. So I actually popped this baking dish under the broiler about six inches away from the broiling element for about a minute. And then of course, some of the breadcrumbs turn too brown, but that's all right. Going to be extra delicious. And here you can see the emerald green, green beans and the ham. And oh, this looks wonderful. I just need to let it cool off a bit and then we can have a taste of it. All right, I'm going to enjoy this gratin with some arugula, lightly dressed. Nice helping of the gratin. Oh, this looks as beautiful as it smells. Okay, bottoms up. Find a green bean over here. Oh yeah. Oh, this has a wonderful taste. The green beans still have a tiny amount of crunch and the sauce Mornay is redolent of the Swiss cheese and the tiny bit of red pepper flakes. And I'm really glad I added the onion powder and the garlic powder. Another bite. Oh, I love it. It's a bit of ham. The ham is smoky and wonderful, of course. Well, I hope you'll give this easy green bean gratin a try someday. Again, you could use garden beans, or you could use, well, you could use frozen beans from the supermarket. It really doesn't matter. It's easy to do, and again, it's got a fabulous taste and texture. So that's all for today. I'm going to head upstairs to an air-conditioned room. It's sweltering in this kitchen, uh, and finish off this meal. And I will see you very soon with another delicious recipe. Don't forget to post a comment below. And also, I will list the ingredients below. See you soon. Bye-bye. So here are the pole beans growing on a cattle panel trellis. And you would not believe how many beans I have. I'm going to turn them into a green bean gratin which is actually a green bean casserole. But it's not the popular Thanksgiving green bean casserole that is topped with dirty French fried onions. No, this one will be very French. Look at these beans. Tons of them. And they are so easy to harvest because I don't have to bend down to pick them. Look at these. Okay, I'm going to harvest a bunch and then I will meet you in the kitchen.